This is a map of all the malls I've been to in Greater Jakarta. There's 90 of them and here's what I've learned so far. First, why are there suddenly more malls in F tier? So in the first two videos, only CBD Chiludok got F tier. The reason that CBD Chiludok got F tier is because the mall has no AZ, or well, most of it. The, th the theater is cold but the rest of the mall is uncomfortably warm. However, since then, a lot of malls have also fallen to this category. The first one is Transmart Graha Raya, which ended up here for the same reason as CBD Chiludok. Besides that, there's also Balai Kota. Balai Kota went to F tier due to the fact that most of the mall is empty. Same goes for Icon Walk Kimone. And when I say the mall is empty, I'm not talking about Taman Anggrek levels of empty. I mean, of course, Taman Anggrek is a tragedy, but we're talking malls where the only tenant is Mako and maybe CFC. And then you get Pluit Junction, located right next to Emporium Pluit Mall, that also suffers the same fate as Balai Kota and Icon Walk Kimone. However, What's strange about Floyd Junction is the fact that for that despite the fact that the mall is empty, the AC is cold and the escalators are running at full speed. I'm not sure what's going on there. Now last is two malls that get F tier. I mean first is Mall Taman Palem and Mall Taman Palem is condemned even before this major sin. But besides Mall Taman Palem, well, across the highway is Green Sedayu Mall. Now Green Sedayu Mall is a decent mall. I went there, it's crowded. The AC is cold. Now there is the issue that the bathroom when I went there, maybe things have changed but the last time I went there, there's no toilet paper. However, that would only send a mall to D tier. What ends up sending both malls to F tier is the pedestrian crossing slash underpass that connects both of these malls. There is no lights, there's holes on the floor, so you're either gonna get robbed here or you're gonna break your leg. So with pedestrian infrastructure this bad, pedestrian infrastructure that makes Kota Casablanca look good, yeah, it's, it's going to condemn everything in a 500 meter radius. Now let's talk about the malls that get E tier. Now some malls do generally deserve E tier. Mainly because they're empty but they're not as empty as F tier malls or they have another fault but mainly the reason why malls get thrown to E tier is because they're completely disconnected from public transport. The most glaring example would be Ion Mall Delta Mas, a mall that would pretty much get A tier automatically due to its size and quality but because there is no public transport there, or well there is but it's there's like what 4 departures if I remember correctly, 4 departures to Jakarta and no local shuttle bus or anything, that condemns Ion Mall Delta Mas to E tier. Same goes with Kota Wisata Cibubur and a bunch of malls in Tangerang. For example, the Sumarincon Digital Center. Despite being the terminus of Dumbri and Royal Trans Services, they don't count because they don't run all day. Also Karstens and the recently opened Iswara. Now moving to geography, we're going to talk about East Jakarta because people complain that East Jakarta's public transport isn't really integrated with anything. At least I saw one comment saying that. Of course, my response is that, yes, that's true, but the problem isn't the LRT. The problem isn't the public transport. The problem is East Jakarta not having anything to connect to. East Jakarta is mostly houses and offices. What most you have there are mainly trade centers or most that are not in the best state or just most that are really average. So for example, there's only one good mall in East Jakarta, that is Ayod Mall, Jakarta Garden City. But even then, that's more in the north side, on the border with North Jakarta. In fact, I even recall someone saying that that area is being invaded by Kelapa Gading. Understandable, to be honest. So ignoring that, the second best mall in East Jakarta is Lipo Plaza Kramat Jati. That mall is decent, it has an arcade, but apart from that, it's kind of small and doesn't, have, doesn't really have anything else to it. I would say in third place would be PGC, being the southern terminus of Corridor 10. Now let's talk about Tangerang City, because Tangerang City's mall situation is a complete disaster. You've got Balai Kota, F tier, Icon Oktimone, F tier, CBD Tiladuk, F tier, Transmart Graharaya, I'm not sure if Transmart Graharaya is in Tangerang or South Tangerang, it's like in the border, F tier, Mall Alam Sutra, E tier, due to the lack of public transport, I'm still not going to forgive Alam Sutra for what they did to Sutra Loop. The only good mall in Tangerang is Tang City. That's all. I mean, maybe Metropolis Town Square has been redeemed. I mean, I saw on Instagram they've recently opened a brand new playground, but I've never been there. But overall, Tangerang is a complete disaster. And this is overall a symptom of Tangerang's slightly weird layout. Despite being a city, you know, when you think of a city, it has businesses, it has offices, it has malls, and then surrounding it, it's the houses and people commute in. Now, Tangerang seems to be the opposite. Tangerang seems to be mostly houses and people commute out of the city to go to work. 
I mean, obviously to Jakarta because Tangerang is a satellite city, but also to other parts of Tangerang, like South Tangerang, Gading Serpong, where I live. So while inside the borders of Tangerang city, there's like one good mall and the rest of the malls are all dying, just outside of the borders, you got some of the best malls in Greater Jakarta, like Sumarekot Mall Serpong and Super Mall Karawachi and Living World. So again, slightly strange layout. The last thing is that I've been to most of the malls in Jakarta already, so maybe developers could use this map to pinpoint where they want to build their new malls. I know some people complain that Jakarta has too many malls, but it's not that Jakarta has too many malls. We have 30 million people living in this metropolitan area. The problem is that the malls are all concentrated and there are some areas that are totally depraved of any good malls. In fact, if we look here, obviously there's East Jakarta, then maybe Cikarang. The southern part of South Tangerang is also lacking. All the mall, all the good malls are on the northern side, like Living World and Mintaro Exchange. So I think Pamulang and Ciputat, they desperately need a good mall. Depok has some good malls like Margo City and I guess Persona Square is not the worst, but they really need to build a shelter in front of the mall. But Depok is a big city, has 2 million people. It, there's definitely demand for more malls in other places. Bogor City, I mean their best mall is Botani Square Mall, though besides that there isn't really much. So I think it's also mall boxes 1 to 3. I haven't been there but I've heard it's actually pretty decent. Of course, Bogor Regency has Tibinong City Mall but come on, Bogor Regency is massive. So I don't think Jakarta has too many malls but certain districts certainly do. Let's start with the Grogo Tanjung Duren area. You've got Central Park, Taman Nangrik, Neo Soho, Citralen. So that's basically 4 malls in what? 2 km or 3 km stretch of road? And of course, it's the whole Sudirman Tamrin road. So what's interesting with in the Sudirman Tamrin access is that there are already flooded malls. There's Plaza Indonesia, there's Grand Indonesia, there is FX Sudirman, there's Senayan City, Plaza Senayan, Pacific Place, Plaza Semanggi that's currently being renovated. But for some reason, someone thought it's a good idea to build even more malls there. And that's how you got Agora Tamrin 9. Link to this map will be in the description. Feel free to stare at it, feel free to enjoy it. And feel free to make your own tier list because I'm very curious on what people think about Mosin Greater Jakarta. 